You saw the title right. Upgrade any PC to Windows 11 right now. And I do mean PCs without secure boot, PCs without TPM. All these machines can be upgraded to Windows 11 if they're running Windows 10 right now. You can easily just push them right to 11. So let's uh, go over what the downsides to this, what the future holds, and how about you just do this? Because it's pretty darn cool, and I gotta say, I really, really am loving Windows 11 so far. However, we need to make a quick disclaimer here before we get on here. This is not authorized by Microsoft, and also, I do think Microsoft will patch this out on the official release. So if you do upgrade your system to Windows 11 and it doesn't have any of these features and it's incapable of having these features, there's a good chance you will stop getting updates, which almost sounds like a, a blessing, but it, it really isn't. You, you should just know that up front. If you do take this path on an incompatible PC, there's a good chance it's going to get stuck on a version sometime in the near future. All right, I went ahead and made a little update any PC to Windows 11 cheat sheet for us. So we can just come to my website, christitus.com forward slash uh, all that. Just click the link up here or down in the description. Now, the very first thing you need to do is sign up for the Windows Insider program. This is how you get the dev build of Windows 11, which is what I'm running right now. We can see that by just doing a WinVer. I'm on Windows 11. You can see it's 22,000 plus. And this is the official build. I have activated this using my Windows 10 key and everything's right with the world. So get on your Windows Insider, register, and then just simply go into your settings. Uh, just come into here, settings, and then go into updates. And from here, you can actually go ahead and do your updates. And if you do run into any problems, just come back to the, this website and make sure you are registered and you're using a Microsoft account uh, that is on the Windows Insider program. As far as the requirement, I got this from this article, but also someone from Twitter let me know about this little registry hack. So they actually sent me a little direct message and said, hey, I got this hack for you. And, and I was like, oh, cool. So I did some research and sure enough, <laughs> it works. Uh, but coming down here, there's two methods to do this way. Uh, right now, the one I'm seeing circulated around YouTube is installing the Windows 10 install.wim. I don't recommend this method, and frankly, that's not going to work in the future. So I'll make a new method for when the official one comes out. But the first way for just a straight upgrade path, we just do these quick modifying of the registry, which this is what they put in here, which I wasn't really satisfied on how this was set up. So on my website, I kind of redid these instructions and also made a little download link so you could actually download this little zip file, open it up, and then you can just run this reg file right here. But if we open up the reg file, you can see this is everything that's in it. You could either just copy and paste this from here. So if you want to just copy everything from that clipboard and paste it into a blank text document and then just put win 11 bypass.reg, you can do that, or you can just directly modify your registry, which is a little bit more dicey if you don't know what you're doing and you've never done it before. That's why I made the easy way, the dot reg. But if we just do a Windows R to pull up our run menu, and then we just do reg edit. From here, you can come into this drop down. Under setup, you probably won't have lab config as a key. So what you need to do is just right click, say new key, and then put a new key in and name it lab config. Under there, you just create two D words. Again, the .red file does this all for you, so you don't necessarily have to do this way, but I always say, hey, never trust someone from the internet, and this is what exactly what I'm doing, so you can see and do it yourself without having to rely on a downloaded file from an untrusted party. Now, once those modifications are done, we do a simple reboot and then come back into your update and as long as you're signed up for the Insider program, you should be fine. But when you get to your Windows update, it's going to look a little different for you, obviously, since I'm on Windows 11 now. You go to the Windows Insider program from Windows Update. Just make sure you're, you're going into here. Make sure on the Insider settings, you're on the Dev Channel Insider account. Make sure that's filled out with the account you signed up for the Insider program on. And then you should be completely fine by just going back to Windows Update, hitting retry for the updates, and then you should have everything that comes in. Now, I did notice whenever I did this initial update, when I hit check for updates, it did have a little download button. 
I did have to hit download and come back to it and hit install. So you might babysit this a little bit for the upgrade process. And note, when it does finally upgrade, it will reboot the computer multiple times. But even with that, I will just go ahead and do a little restart to show you some dual boot. I do not have secure boot set up on my Linux side of things and I'm still able to utilize my Linux with all of the new Windows 11 stuff that requires secure boot. And there's my little boot menu, so I can even come back into here, I go into my Linux side of things, or come into the new Windows 11 side of things. And I must say, I really, really love the new sounds and the aesthetic. Ah! I can't emphasize that enough. That's uh, pretty darn cool. And I'm still working on tweaking this out a little bit, revamping my, my debloat script. But overall, it feels so much more minimal, even though it's all just a feeling and a look. Because at the end of the day, all the hotkeys, everything's still there from Windows 10. And this ain't exactly light. 130-something processes still running and very, very similar to everything I've set up in Windows 10. Now, before you go, there's two things I want to say. First off, these are artificial. I don't like TPM. I don't like secure boot. I don't use them. And if you are concerned with security and privacy, I did an entire video breaking down all the security and privacy things that happen in the computing realm and even not in the computing realm. I highly recommend you check that video out. Also, I kind of go over the death of the desktop PC. I see this accelerating that. Uh, I put that video up here as well, where I go over what's causing the decline and a lot of the e-waste that's happening right now because of just old policies that are put in place by big tech. But with all that said, let me know your thoughts down below, and I'll see you in the next one.